Hello everyone, my name is Jose here at Design Visionaries and in this video I want to give you a very brief explanation of the extrude and the revolve command. Even though they look like very simple commands, there's actually a little bit to them that uh, you need to be aware of. So if you remember this guy here, this is the one that we did uh, a week ago. Uh, we did the sketch for this. If you're confused on how to make this thing, go take a look at the video. Uh, before this and it'll show you how to make this sketch but if you notice it is a little bit tricky right because usually in other CAD softwares what you have to do is delete these curves these interior curves otherwise the software has a little bit of trouble right it starts to kind of get confused it doesn't know where to terminate the intersection so it requests that you delete the interior portion of the curves well, not in NX. NX has a powerful thing called a, a scope filter and a selection scope, which allow you to change how NX defines its curve structure. So we will use this example here, and if I want to extrude it, I'm going to hit the X key on my keyboard. So I'm going to say X. As you can see, the first thing it's asking us for is to select a curve. Well, in this case, we don't really have one, but if you look over here, you have the ability to choose a curve rule. Now, when I train my students, when I train all these engineers, my tip to them is to always get familiar with this entire section, not just the curve rule, but the overall section here, because it's either going to be your best friend or it's going to be your worst enemy. So, I'm going to go ahead and change this. If I choose single curve, it does what you think it does. If I go in there, I can select them one by one, which is very nice. As you can see, it just does that. I'm going to go ahead and deselect these by holding the shift key and making a box around them. The other one that you have is connected curves, and that one is also pretty simple. If you choose one of these curves, if it detects that it's connected, it will select the whole thing. In this case, I don't have any, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. The other one is tangent curves. If I choose one of them, if it detects tangency, it will select all of the curves for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and deselect that as well. The other one is feature curves. So this one's actually pretty nice. All you really have to do is if you have a sketch over here, you can select it from the part navigator and it will select all of the curves in the feature. So if you have this layout and you want to select the entire layout without having to go in there and you know kind of edit these filters, you can select it from the part navigator and it will allow you to simply select all the sketches in that feature. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and deselect that again. The other one that you have is face edges. So if you have a solid piece of geometry, let's say you have a cube. If you select a face on that cube, it will choose the face edges in order to create an extrusion profile. In this case, we don't have any solid geometry, so there's really nothing that we can select. The other one is sheet edges, which is the exact same thing. The only difference is that it works on sheets. It does not work on solids region boundary curves is actually a pretty neat one so if you kind of think like a coloring book that is pretty much how region boundary curves works so if you move your mouse to an enclosed area if you notice it highlights it in this little red color or pink color and you can select that and it will use that in order to create its profile and as a matter of fact that's what I'm going to use so I'm going to choose region boundary curves and now you have the ability to enter a distance. So let's say that we enter a distance of 50 millimeters, but maybe I want to do a, an offset or maybe I want to draft it. So in order to get the more advanced options in NX, if you don't see them, all you have to do is hit this little gear icon over here. So if you hit this guy here, boop, you can say extrude more. When you do that, you get a couple of more settings here. Primarily, you get the draft and you get the offset. Now, the draft, if you expand it, you can drop this down and choose from start limit or from start section. In this case, I'm going to choose from section here. And as you can see, as I bump this number up, it adds a more and more angle to this and it drafts it at a more serious angle. 
So if you're doing injection molded parts and you want to angle it without having to go into the draft command, this is a pretty handy technique. The other option that you have at your disposal is the offset command. So if I drop this down, I can change this to say single sided and single sided just makes it thicker by that amount that you're entering. So in this case, I can enter five or if I say 10, it obviously gets thicker and thicker in that direction. But if I choose two sided, what it'll do is it'll basically make a shell of this and it's a matter of you entering the thickness that you want for the shell. So if I say maybe five millimeters, as you can see, this whole thing becomes uh, thinner. I can then go ahead and say OK. And there's my nice extrude with a draft. And I have the two-sided offset. Very handy little tip, especially if you don't want to add extra clutter to your part navigator. This is really a highlight of NX that allows you to make things on the fly. So now what I want to show you is another example, but this time it's with the revolve command. And the revolve command works very similar to the extrude. There's just one trick that I want to show you uh, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of surfacing this little button is going to be your best friend so here I have a sketch like so that I want to create two features on now notice that I actually didn't close this top curve here I left it open and that is on purpose and you're gonna see why other than that however all I want to do with this is create an extrude for this bottom portion and I want to do a revolve for this top portion. So I'm going to go ahead and say finish here. Okay, and I probably should have uh, not gone through the extrude commands. I'm just going to hit cancel. I do want to save the sketch, so say yes. You wouldn't believe how many times I tell people to save the sketch. If you say no, then all of your hard work goes to the trash. So we do want to save the sketch. I'm going to say extrude. And I'll leave it still on region boundary curves. I think you can kind of already tell which curve rule is my favorite. I'll select this uh, rectangle here. And I'm just going to change this to none for now. And in the direction, I'm just going to go ahead and choose the x axis. Not really sure why it is not liking my direction. But if I drop this down, I can go ahead and choose the x c vector there. And in this case, I want to change the uh, end limit. If I drop this down, I can choose symmetric. So let's say that I'm going to make it 50 millimeters on both sides. So that means that this thing is going to be 100 millimeters. Correct? So the Boolean, I will set it to none. And then I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Now with that being said, what I want to do up here is revolve this portion without really grabbing these curves down here. So if I activate the revolve command, I can drop this little drop down here and choose revolve. I can then select these curves, but we're met with a little bit of a dilemma and that dilemma is we can't choose this curve individually. Do you remember how you changed the filter? Well, I hope you do because if you come up here, you can set this to single curve. And now we can just go in there and select these one by one. So I'm going to say one, 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 bam, bam. And now when I move my mouse over here, we are met with a problem. The problem is that NX wants to select the entire thing. And if I select it, it'll actually give me an error. And it says selected objects will result in a self intersecting section, modify or delete the invalid curve. In this case, what I need to do is activate this button here that says stop at intersection. This is an incredibly useful button for any type of curve creation or surface creation. So if you hit this button here, when you select that curve again, NX will be smart enough to know where to terminate that curve based on where the previous curves intersect. As you can see, we now have selected that portion without any issue. Now we can define our revolve. So the next thing to choose is the vector. These blue vectors that you see here, these are called the Orient Express Tool vectors. 
Now, these vectors are quote-unquote dumb, right? They're not that smart. All they're really there for is to determine a direction. There is no point to these vectors. So if you choose a vector, it will then ask you for a point because, you know, this vector just tells you the direction. In this case, I already have an axis that is perfect for this, and I think you will agree with me. That happens to be the Z axis. So I'm going to choose the Z axis here, and as you can see, now we have our revol our revolve. If I were to choose the Orient Express tool here, you can see that it's asking me for a point. All I would have to do is choose the origin point. And there are many ways you can do this. Uh, you can go into the point dialog, and over here you can drop this down and choose uh, inferred point, and just say OK. And as you can see, there's the center of the world, as some people call it, uh, selected. The easiest thing to do, however, in order to avoid all of this, is to simply choose the Z axis. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And as you can see, we have completed that task. So the main thing that you should be aware of is that that stop at intersection button is truly a wonderful button that is really there to help you trim curves to certain extents. I hope you found this tip helpful. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us at Design Visionaries. Uh, anything else, feel free to leave a comment below. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.